Welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And welcome back. Um, so this evening's video, I'm going to show you how to reduce the size of a VMware vCenter server appliance, the easy way. There are two ways to do this. Um, one is not really technically supported, um, but basically create another disk, smaller size disk, and move the storage partition uh, onto the other disk, obviously uh, via SSH. Uh, technically, it's, it's not supported. Um, and then there's this way. Um, and you may ask, well, you know, why do you actually want to reduce the size of your VMware vCenter server? Um, and this actually basically applies to uh, vCenter Server 7 or vCenter Server 8. Um, the same procedure can be done in both. Now, if you've been watching these videos, uh, you will know by now that we have gone through quite a number of VMware vCenter servers from uh, 8.03, we'll call it GA, and then we've gone to A, B, C, and now we're on D. Um, there is one drawback um, that I've sort of kind of spotted, which actually, again, applies to 7.0 um, or 8.0, and usually catches you out if you do a 7.0 to 8.0 upgrade. Um, every time that the installer or the upgrader upgrades your VMware vCenter server, it increases the size of the storage. Now, you may have noticed when I've done a couple of RDU upgrades that I've sort of kind of struggled to maintain them at a tiny size. Um, and it basically wants to do a small, and then I struggled and I had to do a small large. Well, this is because, and I've just noticed when I sort of kind of look back, um, if I sort of kind of go roll, if I look back at, um the the disk size is on the original 8.03 um you know you can see quite clearly there that there's 586 586 gigabytes is used on that uh if we have a little look on a um see what the settings are uh again it's crept up to 700 gig now now our environment's not changed we've not added any more hosts we've not created any more virtual machines um, so why is the disk size increasing? And it does appear to be a fact function. Um, again, if we look here at the hard disk size, um, forward and that's gone down a bit. Let's have a little look at disk sizes on, on this one, 700 gig again. And if we actually basically have a little look at the latest one, um we're now at two terabytes so going from um 8.03 which is 500 gig now our vmware vcenter server is occupying uh two terabytes of disk space when it doesn't actually basically have two terabytes worth of data in it so it's time really in this lab because it was really actually restricting me on um what i was actually doing in the lab and i had a little look and thought hang on a minute, is RDU actually basically growing the size of VMware vCenter server for not really any purpose? Now, if you were in a production environment and you had all the space under the sun on your LUNs, then you probably wouldn't really care about this. But, you know, if you were in a smaller environment and space is important, uh, then this video is for you. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I've already done because it takes a while, um, I've actually basically made a backup. Uh, so the backup size is 1.48 gigabyte. That took 11 minutes, uh, November the 5th, 2024. Um, and, and that actually reminds me, happy bonfire night. Not quite sure whether or not that you celebrate bonfire night um, over in the, the US. Um, ha happy election votings or whatever you're doing over there. Um, but anyway, the 5th of November uh, in the UK is celebrated as a bonfire night, if you look back in our history, um, you will know that it's all about the gunpowder plot, uh, where a guy called Guy Fawkes 
uh, who was born just up the road from me in York, in Yorkshire. Um, he decided that he was going to blow up the Houses of Parliament um, because uh, he wasn't really very happy with our government at the time. Um, I know really how he feels. Um, I don't actually endorse any violence, uh, however, um, or going out and blowing up the Houses of Parliament, just to get that on the record. Um, but anyway, so Guy Fawkes basically decided that he was basically um, uh, the gunpowder plot and um, he was going to blow up the Houses of the Parliament. Anyway, you know, he was found um, and he was thrown on a bonfire and he was burnt. Um, so because of that, we celebrate Guy Fawkes uh, and we celebrate bonfire night on the 5th of November. Uh, and we build a bonfire, uh, we have a bonfire, and we throw um, an effigy of Guy Fawkes, or the guy, on the bonfire, and we burn him. That's what they do in the rest of the UK. However, that today is still an illegal practice inside the city walls at the city of York. I'm not quite sure what would actually happen if you did actually burn an effigy of Guy Fawkes on a bonfire inside um, the city walls. I'm not quite sure whether or not you'd actually go to prison. But anyway, a little bit of um, historical trivia um, in a county and a, a city that I uh, don't live very far from. Uh, the city of York uh, in Yorkshire is where Guy Fawkes uh, was born um, in... I don't know, 1506, 1606? I don't know, something like that. History's not my uh, my best thing. Anyway, so, uh, back up. Now, the reason why we want to back up is because the method that we're actually going to use is we're going to pretend, let's pretend, um, that our current vCenter server is down and broken, and basically we're just going to do a restore from a previous vCenter backup. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. Um, I have done a video on this before. I think it was uh, uh, vCenter Server 7. There we go. In fact, actually, it was um, a how to restore vCenter Server Backup to restore production vCenter Server 8 appliance. Um, so I've already done this before. And um, we're going to follow basically exactly the same procedure as that. Uh, but this is the reason we're doing this in the lab here is so that we can shrink that VMware vCenter server down. So uh, mount the ISO um, in the drive and we're going to click a restore. So we're going to deploy vCenter server. And if you've actually basically followed um, these videos before, um, you will um, know that this is sort of kind of similar. Um, so I'm going to go off and fetch um, our backup path and backup folder uh, from the settings that we have um, here. Uh, so I'm just going to sort of kind of copy and paste these. Uh, and I'm going to need a username and So that's our, our username. Just copied and pasted the password for our SFTP server, followed by next. Uh, now it should connect and it says file not found. Okay, so what I actually did there, um, I'm sure when I've actually used another protocol, I was able to browse and select. But anyway, so I've just actually um, opened up the, the backup and I've actually basically copied that entire, we'll call that a link, um, including the underscore on the end. Um, and then I've actually basically cut and pasted that and it now actually basically turns around and tells us that um, that's the location, that's the backup timestamp, that's the host name, that's the deployment type. It's interesting it's actually picked up this four v cpus 21 gig of memory and two terabytes of disk space and i'm hoping really that it doesn't actually reproduce that uh, but we will we will see we will see so followed by next um i'm going to specify i want to deploy this on the least loaded host which is esxi001 um 
only because um, our posts here really are are very lightweight. So I'm going to say followed by next, followed by yes. It's going to validate. I'm going to call it VMware vCenter server. Um, I'm going to change the name slightly. So I'm going to paste that. Um, and I'm just going to basically, I'm going to call it light. Um, I'm going to specify a root password. Followed by next. Now I get the option basically to say that I want a tiny deployment size. I want a storage size of default. So it's quite possible that that restore option is just actually basically making us aware of what our backup is. So I want a tiny because the whole point of doing this is to shrink. Um, OK, let's have a little look at the data stores. Um, so I'm going to select um, ESXi 001 local. Uh, enable thin disk mode. Um, it's already populated the settings for me. And I'm going to click, click finish. And that's basically going to start the deployment of a brand new VMware vCenter server um, 8.0D to our ESXi 001 host. And once it's actually basically finished it, it's going to power it up and then it's going to restore the database and everything from that backup. So what I'm going to do now, uh, because I don't want it to get into a complete mess, is that I'm finished with this version now. So I'm actually just even just going to tell it to shut down that guest and it's going to shut down that guest uh, and access to this VMware vCenter server is going to end when eventually it shuts down um, and then we will hop on to ESXi001 we finish with that I put that in the description but this is exactly what we're doing here um, so let's just log in with the root credentials because hopefully eventually we will see that we've got a VMware vCenter server 8.0 3D Lite, which is our shrunken um, disk version. And if I just basically click here, uh, then I will wait for that to deploy. I'm hoping that the audio is actually better uh, in this particular video. I've just notched up um, the mixing desk on the mic input. Uh, one notch. Um, I had some feedback uh, from uh, somebody um, on YouTube saying that the volume was very low, um, which surprises me because um, I have my headphones normally up very, very high because I'm probably deaf. Um, but anyway, so I've just notched the audio up a little bit. So um, if you're finding it too loud now, then come back to me and let me know. Um, anyway, so with that, um, I'm basically just going to uh, disappear. Um, I'm going to have um, going to have some coffee. Uh, my cat Sylvie broke my other mug, uh, so I've now got another another mug. Not that you can see because it's completely invisible. There we go. Uh, I've got another mug now because Sylvie broke my mug the other day. Um, deliberately, on purpose, to get me out of bed. Uh, down in the kitchen. Um, and uh, she gets a bit frustrated. And uh, she knocked it off and broke it. Anyway, so I will uh, come back um, uh, shortly.
and we're back. Stage one deployment of VMware vCenter Server 8.0D has been completed. So uh, to proceed with stage two of the update, to proceed with stage two of the deployment process, vCenter Server Setup, click Continue. So we're now going to click Continue, and it's going to load step two. Uh, so now it's actually going to do the restore from backup. Um, so the path was correct. The username and the password are correct. We don't have an encryption password set, so I'm going to click Next. So hopefully that's all going to be able to reach out to the SFPC server. If I just turn over my back and have a little look, I can have a little look at verbose mode. It's not doing anything now. Um, username's correct. The password's correct. Okay, so we've got a failure here. Well, that seems completely goofed. Um, and the fact that we just took that backup before we turned it off, um, it's a current backup. But even if it's not liking the fact that this particular version that we deployed has only got um, two CPUs rather than four, and it's only got 21 gig, these other error messages don't look right. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to actually turn off um, this VMware vCenter server and I'm going to turn on, turn on. I'm going to change these values uh, to 21 gig and four CPUs and see whether or not that those error messages disappear. But this doesn't seem to make any difference at all. OK, <clears throat> let's see whether or not this is actually going to work uh, again, like always. And I don't know what it is really in, in the last 12 months. I seem to be spending more of my time in the uh, Broadcom portal knowledge base um, diagnosing issues and errors. But anyway, this is what Hancock's VMware Half Hour is all about. You know, I encounter the errors, I fix the errors, I record them, I publish them. And then when you come across the same issues, then you can see how easy it is to resolve. Anyway, so let's see whether or not that this is going to proceed this time. Um, we might have to log in again. Um, OK, and that's actually just going to turn around and tell me to finish. And once started, you will not be able to pause, stop, restore them from completing. OK, so hopefully that's actually going to restore the data now um, in the background. Um, when that started, OK, restore data transfer in progress. OK, good. I did actually basically think for a moment there that we were going to get completely kiboshed on this and it was going to completely fail on its ass. But again, a little bit of Googling um, and I actually basically found this Broadcom uh, knowledge base article. Metadata and system validation failed. Message when attempting a file based restore of vCenter server. Um, and again, it would appear that the cause is because the partitions on the VCSA is not matching with the backup copy causing the failure to restore. So you may remember that we were operating on a small, large, and that was our backup. And realistically, the way that this is sort of kind of working is at present, you can't actually restore to a different sized VMware vCenter server, which is certainly something different from what I've seen before, because this used to work with no issues. Um, but it can quite simply be resolved. And I did actually basically just do a little bit of experimentation. And I did say that I shut down the appliance. Uh, I changed it to uh, 21 gig and four CPUs, and I started up again, and it still failed, but those error messages went away, but I still got all the other crap that you saw, uh, which then led me basically to this particular article. Um, all I've done um, is I've taken a backup of the, um, the JSON file that's there, uh, which contains backup.metadata.json. Um, and all I did basically was have a little look through this table here of tiny default against all these main points for all these 17 disks and made sure that they were correct. So um, 
what I'll do, um, the mouse has just stopped working. Uh, just one moment. Okay, so this is the original backup metadata on uh, backup dash metadata copy that I copied before I started changing it. Uh, so you can see here, memory 21, the uh, root partition is 48 gig, it's the same. The update manager partition um, was the same. Uh, the image builder partition was the, the same, uh, but VTSDB was 550 gig, whereas the default is 10. Archive is 50, which is according to list 50, that's the same. Swap one's the same, log's the same, DB's the same, net dump's the same, auto deploy's the same, uh, DB log's the same, uh, but VTS DB blog is five and it's 15 gig um, here. And then the last one, which was seat, uh, is 10 gig and mine was 550. So all I've actually basically done is just basically made amendments to the backup JSON file um, and they match now we've got another exception restored now oh dear just get hey so just as a little recap because some of you actually may notice that the uh, the t-shirt has changed uh, because we're on a different day and um it's been many coffees uh, since because we've had a we discovered a problem in the lab. Um, we were using core SFTP server. And for whatever reason um, of the core SFTP server, it would shit out and crash. Um, so that was the reason um, for the failure of the backup being restored. Now, we have changed the SFTP server uh, that we used in the previous video where we were doing a restore from backup for vCenter server. Um, so we've had to scratch around to find another SFTP server. And um, to be honest, really, I never ever appreciated that um, Windows server or Windows 11, Windows 10 uh, can actually basically be an SSH server. So I actually thought that rather than use any third party bunkum software um, that will just go with the standard um, SSH server within Windows Server 2019, I think, or 2022. Um, so the service changed as well. We've moved the backups. We were actually storing the backups on the NAS anyway, to be honest with you. Um, but the SFTP server was just actually basically pointing them to the NAS. Um, but um that doesn't actually basically um detract or distract um from the information that we discussed um the the metadata and system validation failure um is possibly a bug um because the petitions on the vcs vcsa is not matching with the backup copy causing the failure to resolve so um that had to be changed anyway and then at the end uh the reason for the restoration failing uh, wasn't really anything to do with the restore it was to do with the sftp server uh, which was actually crapping out on us so but that did actually basically render um the vcenter server completely unusable um so you wouldn't believe the number of times that we have um tried to restore this uh, because of the SFTP server, as I said, we were having issues with the first SFTP server, so we moved it. We used core SFTP server. After configuring that and doing everything on that to get it to restore, it was still failing. So, without further ado, here we go um, with our new SFTP server, uh, or SSH server, based on Windows Server 2022. Uh, so the password's changed. Uh, the username's changed, the IP address has changed, but the backup is still exactly the same. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not doing a basically um, smoke and mirrors. Um, here's one we made earlier, but that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Um, although the whole principle of this video is to show you how we can reduce the size of our two terabyte um, 
VMware vCenter Server 8.03, which has become two terabyte in size because we've done probably one, two, three, four technically upgrades on it. And every time we upgrade it, it gets larger. So I'm just going to click next and I'm hoping um, that this is just going to start restoring uh, with no hiccups at all. Um, so shut down the original backup vCenter server before you proceed to avoid network conflicts. OK, I'm happy with that. And we're going to click uh, finish and I'm going to click OK. Let's hopefully this is just going to start restoring the backup. If this doesn't actually restore via um, SFTP or via the SSH server, um, then I'm going to um, migrate it uh, to an NFS data store. And I think we have used NFS in the past, so I'm sort of kind of rolling back now and wondering um, were we using NFS um, backups and restore? But okay, that looks good because it's actually got to 17%, and this is the first time, um, and it's 25%. It's the first time I've actually basically get to 17% and 25%. So we might actually be within with a luck here 34%, um, 44%. Um, I'm trying to keep focused um, because there has been. Um, as I said, I think this is the third day of VMware exploring Barcelona today. And there was some information and news that uh, came out yesterday, which, uh, to be honest, she really was, I think, depressing at, um, at most. Um, but we'll leave that depressing news. Well, I think it's depressing. Um, we'll leave that depressing news for our VMware news at the end of the week, um, where I can. I can discuss it then. But anyway, so this is started the post restore options, or it's almost finished even. It's at 90%, 91%. Um, so I just had a ping on my watch that turned around and told me that a DHL delivery is arriving, arriving from the US, Los Angeles. Um, the interesting thing is, is that I haven't actually basically purchased anything from the US. Not that I remember. Um, OK, so it's now actually starting all the services. So it has actually done the restoration. Um, so I'm going to bob off and we'll speed this bit up in post. And hopefully we'll have a working VMware vCenter server 8.03D uh, light version. OK, I did actually stop recording because I did think that it was going to fail. Um, me of little faith, um, as it seemed to stick at 71 percent for a very, very long time. So I stopped recording because I thought there's no point speeding it all up in post. I was just going to sit there and just as I'd done that, take my headphones off and open the windows in here to let a bit of air in because it's a bit warm. Uh, it finished. Stage two completed. So. Hopefully, if I click this link um, it's looking good launch vSphere client now of course all the services have been uh, starting up um, so we're not we're hopefully we're not going to get any error messages like um, no healthy upstream uh, web client initialization that's all done 
uh, as part of the, the restoration. So we're just hoping that we can see our three hosts in the inventory uh, and our virtual machines. And we'll then be able to inspect uh, the discs, but you might have actually really seen while we'll wait for that. That all these discs here are the standard default uh, discs, uh, standard sizes um, that we would expect to see in a default tiny. Um, so, uh, okay, it's quite normal really to, to be able to see that we've got um, a high virtual machine usage and quite high to see that we've got. So um, what we're keen really to have a little look at is our VMware vCenter Server 8.03D Lite and look at the storage. Uh, so if we have a little look at, uh, we've already seen this anyway, really. Um, when we had one via ESXi001, we could see. So hard disks 586.85 gig and if we just go back to our original remember and we have a little look at edit settings there uh we can see it says two terabyte so i think that's it qed um i think we've definitely proved there um that if you have been using definitely rdu um one of the one of the disadvantages of using RDU is each time you're going to go through that upgrade cycle. And um, obviously we've been doing a few here in the lab from dot three to A, from A to B to C to D. Um, we've grown our VMware vCenter server to a massive two terabyte. Um, if you're in an organization with lots of storage, you probably wouldn't really notice. But it is sort of in this environment with a small lab of three hosts and a handful of virtual machines uh, two terabyte does seem um, over the top anyway i've got to disappear and i've got to say goodbye thanks very much for watching uh, please come back uh, don't forget to endorse if you're on experts exchange or thumbs up and subscribe uh, my dhl wagon has just arrived and i've got to go downstairs to greet him so thank you very much and goodbye uh, come back and watch some more hancock vmware half hours in the future Bye bye